Today's lecture is on telephone techniques. Telecommunications equipment includes the telephone system. Is it a multiple line phone? Is there call routing? In other words, is there a menu when the phone is answered and says, for the doctor's office, press one. This is called an automatic voice response unit. Voicemail and the office phone. Do we have voicemail and who answers the voicemail? Answering machine, who's responsible for taking messages off the answering machine? And who's responsible for working with the answering service? In the morning, calling the answering service to let them know you're there and getting the messages. And then at, in the late day, turning your phones over to the answering service. Cellular or cell phones uh, can be personal and business use alike. Pagers or beepers. What is the technology of paging? You'll be shown how to page your practitioner at the place of work. Calling a pager and using interactive pagers. A telecommunications device for the deaf. It looks like a laptop, as you can see from this picture, so that sign language and lip reading can be um, used and the relay system that it works on. Effective telephone communication. Communication skills include completeness, clarity, conciseness, courtesy, and cohesiveness. And the guidelines for telephone etiquette and using the telephone efficiently. What are some of these guidelines? Answer the phone within the first two rings. And make sure you hold the phone to your ear or use a headset so that other people aren't hearing the call. And you don't want to cradle the call because you'll um, get a kink in your shoulder. Hold the mouse mouthpiece about an inch from your mouth and acknowledge the caller. Good morning, this is Sarah from Dr. Jones' office. Who am I speaking with? Oh, this is, this is Tom. Hello, Tom, how are you? Be courteous, calm, and pleasant. No matter how hurried you are or how much work you have to do, we can tell when you call us. Identify the nature of your call. We're calling to confirm your appointment for tomorrow. And then at the end of the call, allow the caller to hang up first. And one other thing, smile. When you're talking to patients, make sure you have a smile on your face because we can tell if you're smiling or not. You leave all your troubles and sorrows at home when you come to work and you let the patient hear through the phone and see a happy face. And you must follow HIPAA guidelines by not leaving information that um, is too sensitive. Telephone etiquette. What is telephone etiquette? Your voice. Clear, make it clear, concise, pronounce the words correctly, enunciate, use a gentle tone. And how about making a good impression? Give courteous, undivided attention to your phone call. And what about putting a call on hold? If you need to put a call on hold, say, I am so sorry. I'm going, may I please put you on hold for a couple of minutes while I make sure that I can answer that question? Returning patient calls need to be done in a timely manner. Remembering the patient's name. Have, have, write their name down in front of you. Communicating with empathy and ending the conversation with courtesy, please. Types of incoming calls. You can get calls from patients for appointment scheduling. For billing inquiries and complaints. Requests for reports or questions about medications or care. And what about other calls from attorneys or physicians or salespeople? Your practice will have a policy on how to handle those types of calls. Managing incoming calls, screening calls. All right, so this is very important on screening calls. And why are you calling? Who are you calling for? Well, I just want to chat with the doctor about this or that or the other thing. Just take a name and send the message on. But it's up to you as the telephone operator to screen the calls and make sure they get to where they need to go and that you don't send through nuisance calls. Again, this is called routing calls. Telephone triage. Use your triage guidelines and categorize your problems, and maybe we need to do a little patient education as well. How about taking accurate phone messages? Documenting calls. Date, time, who called, and the phone number they called from are the four most important things when you're taking a telephone message. The, today's date, the time they called, the person who's calling, and a callback phone number. All right, we have message pads, as you can see. And sometimes there's a manual log or there's an electronic log. There's also electronic messaging. 
And some tips for ensuring accurate messages again are date, time, the person calling, the phone number, and why are they calling. Always, always, always maintain patient confidentiality. Now, if you're placing an outgoing call, find the phone number. And if you get voicemail or an answering machine, you know, this is Sarah from Dr. Jones' office just calling to confirm your appointment for tomorrow. This is Sarah from Dr. Jones' office. We're returning your call. Please give us a call at your earliest convenience. You cannot say we're returning your call to give you lab results. That's a HIPAA violation. Retrieving messages from the answering system or service we talked about and arranging conference calls if needed. And that ends today's lecture on telephone techniques.